Welcome here to the Fall Guys HQ. I'm Leah Alexandra and today we're getting into all things creative because, drum roll please, Fall Guys Creative is launching on the 10th of May. <laughs> yes! <laughs> With the launch just around the corner, we thought today we'd dig into all the juicy details about the latest update, but that's not all. We've got some exclusive teasers. That's right. We have so much exciting stuff planned for 2023 and beyond. And today we're going to take a sneak peek and meet the people who are making it happen. So let's get into it. And where better to start than with a quick chat with creative director Joe Walsh. Hello, Joe, and welcome to the beautiful Fall Guys HQ library. Now you are here to talk about creative. But before we do that, uh, we've got a few questions about the direction the game has been going. So what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, it's been a long time in development, the, the new season update, and uh, I think we want to mention that that's something that's kind of going to continue over the course of the year. We're looking to make some big changes to Fall Guys, and that means that seasons are going to get slightly longer to give us the time to kind of make these big changes. But um, there's going to be big additions happening during a season as well, so you aren't going to get those long droughts of content that we've maybe had in the past. Um, it's worth talking about vaulting as well. It's always a, a hot topic with our community. Um, that's something that's going to continue as we go into the new season. Uh, old rounds are coming back. Some of them are going into the vault. Uh, but it's worth mentioning that these things are like really paying dividends for the dev team. It's allowing us to really focus on the launch of the new season of Creative, which is yeah a big change to the game. So Creative sounds like no small task. It must have been pretty difficult to implement such a huge part of the game. So, I mean, how was that for you? Yeah, it's been... Uh, the single biggest change that we've ever made to the game and it's it's really exciting to finally give players like the keys to the kingdom basically like we're finally going to see the types of rounds that people uh, want to make like crazy ideas that we could have never thought of as developers uh, and this is kind of only the start of it as well like the creative that we launched with season four is just the beginning we're going to be adding new obstacles new round types new themes to creative as well um, yeah it's all going to keep growing uh, as we continue to support fall guys over the next few years so it really sounds like a cycle can develop, the players inspire the devs, devs inspire the players, and you all come up with something really interesting and unique together. Um, but I mean, how is that going to shape the future of Fall Guys, do you think? Yeah, so one of the main changes is that from now on, uh, the dev team at Mediatonic are going to be using the creative tools to build levels for the game exclusively. That means that we can launch more content than we ever have before. Uh, with the launch of Season 4, we're going to be dropping um, over 50 rounds throughout the course of the season, which is way more than we've ever managed before. Um, another thing which is also really helpful is that for the first time we can start tweaking the levels over the air so we won't need to push new updates live to fix bugs which is again a, like a big problem we've always had with the game. Um, so all of these things are just going to make the content so much richer and so much more varied uh, from this point forwards really. And not to understate it, because that is really, really cool. Their players are going to be using the same tools that the devs are using yeah. and, you know, getting a little taste of that game development process as well, yeah. which is really fun. Um, now, if I was to go and build a round myself, how would I share it? Yeah, so once you've completed your round and you've proved that it's possible, you'll get a share code and you can then share that code with your friends uh, and you can fire that up in a uh, custom lobby uh, with your friends or on your own. If you just want to play other people's rounds solo, that's totally fine as well. Uh, we're going to be kind of curating the best rounds that are trending as well. And so each week we're going to be trying to put live uh, a sideshow of all the best content from the community. Uh, and you might even get your round into main show. Uh, we're also going to be adding and improving the discoverability stuff. So hopefully in the future, it'll just get even easier for you to find the types of rounds that you want to play. Very cool, another work in progress. It just yeah. keeps getting better. Um, amazing. So you mentioned themes earlier. Um, each season does seem to have its own very, very specific theme. Is this season any different? Season four is launching with uh, a digital theme. It's sort of a pastel-y uh, vaporwave inspired theme. And this theme is launching with a bunch of really cool retro digital costumes. Uh, and a new obstacle called the Boom Blaster as well, which is sort of a hybrid between uh, a punch glove and one of the lily pads as well. So uh, something new for people to play with. All of this stuff is going into creative on day one for you to start making levels with. 
Well, the boom blaster sounds like it's going to be fun and absolutely infuriating. So I cannot wait to get hands on with that and build with it as well from day one, which is very exciting. Are there any other little changes in the season we can get a sneak peek of? Yeah, there's a whole bunch more stuff. Um, the show selector is getting like a fresh coat of paint. So you'll be able to now have way more stuff live through the show selector, uh, kind of creative rounds, other stuff. Um, also, body blocking is something that we know the community have wanted improvements to for a long time. So we've taken a look at the code there and we're kind of changing the way you jostle and bump against other players. So it should feel more fluid and more fun and more satisfying. Uh, finally, we're going to be changing the way uh, season passes uh, work. Season passes are going away and we're replacing them with a shorter fame pass. So you're going to have multiple fame passes each season. Uh, these fame passes are going to be shorter, more bite-sized, 40 tiers to each one, uh, and they're going to cost 600 show bucks, so they're going to be cheaper. This is going to allow players to kind of feel good about completing those things in a more bite-sized way, which kind of matches the way that people tend to play Fall Guys. Um, but they're still going to be full of amazing costumes, our own costumes, kind of collaboration costumes as well. Um, so yeah, really excited to launch that with Season 4 as well. Thank you so much, Joe. I cannot wait to dive in. And we actually have a sneak peek of the first Fame Pass right now. Check it out. I tell you we've only just started the show and already we know that next season your four guys will step into the digital realm creators will be able to work with the same tools as the development team we're dropping 50 new rounds throughout the season Whew. you want more fine today's reveal is about giving you a full exploration of creative so let's do just that and jump on over to the mediatonic studio where the team there are going to walk us through how you go about creating a brand new round hi everyone i'm adina and i'm max and today we're going to show you creative and build a round together yeah so let's just get right into it so from the get-go we have the new creative tab where you can now create new rounds and load previous rounds, but we're gonna start a new round. Yeah, so we're gonna go straight go. into that. From the beginning, you can immediately see it's gonna ask you what mode you wanna make. Uh, for now, we're just gonna build a race. There will be more coming at the, eventually, but for now, we're just gonna build a race. And the same with the theming, so you can change the sort of theming of your race or other modes as we bring them in. So we're gonna go for original. Just a bit of a disclaimer here. Remember that this is a dev build, yes. and there could be some slight changes uh, on release. From the get-go, you're going to be greeted with a whole new UI that you're probably not used to seeing when playing Fall Guys. First thing you're going to want to take, a, uh, you're going to want to acknowledge is that in the top left there's a checklist. Uh, so you're going to need a start line and a finish line for a race. You'll also see that you can uh, move the cursor around with the left stick, um, and obviously rotate the camera with the right stick and we've got our start line here to get us started. A few things that when you're gonna start building this round out is we've got our objects list when you press right on the D-pad. Immediately you're greeted with a whole bunch of icons that might not immediately make sense. So let's walk through it a little. Let's go. So we have our platforms tab, which is just our static geometry, blocks and barriers, which are good little static bits of geometry that aren't quite floors and walls, but rather small little obstacles you can place. We have our moving surfaces. We have obstacles, which you'll all know and recognize, things like our pendulums and our cannons, and our little bits of decoration, which uh, sort of add a little bit of flavor to your rounds. Um, and you can use sort of and place them at the end to kind of make, give you around a bit of depth. You can see across all of the objects that you can place that there is a number attached to them. That affects your budget in the top right. Once you reach the end of that budget, you're not allowed to build anything else. For that reason, it's good to build the bare bones out of your round get the basic gameplay concepts, and then add layers on top of that from there. In terms of your controls, you've got access to kind of going up and down, moving around with the stick, as said, and you can zoom in and out for those finer details. Uh, let's, uh, let's get into it. Yeah, so let's dive in. First things first, we should probably figure out how many players we want our round to be, right? Yeah. So we're going to go into changing our settings here. 
And we I think can, we should go for a medium. You think medium? Round, yeah. So you don't want to build a small starting line and then an incredibly wide level. So we've got our medium starting line. Yep. So, uh, Edie, I think you've got an idea of where we're going from here, right? Yeah, I wanted to play with the DoorDash. Okay, sure. Let's get some DoorDash doors in here. Yeah. Three's looking a little small. Yeah, make it five. Again, on each of our objects, you can change the properties of each object. Uh, most of the objects have different properties, some relating to color, some to just general uh, values. So in this instance, I can change the amount of doors and how many of them will actually be open or closed. What do you want to do with this? You're going to rotate them horizontally. So we're going to line that up and then we're going to get a little bit of floor, a little bit of flooring. This will snap. Um, you have snap properties, which makes life um, way easier, which does make life easier when you've not got anything selected. You can go to your tools and you can select snapping. So you can do camera snapping and object snapping. And then we're going to snap our door dash doors onto, onto that, yes. which is great. Now I think you're going to take all of that mm -hmm. and make another level of it. OK, cool. So we're going to go into our tools again. We're going to go to multi select. This allows us to create a paintbrush and select the objects we want to copy. We're going to copy those, bring them down. And it makes it try very and, fast as well. Try and line that up. So if it doesn't line up, that's fine. You can just keep moving it around until you feel it meets your perfect creation. Should we test that a little bit? Yeah, let's give it a little test. So we can come on in. You can press the button on the controller that stays at the top. Yeah. And you can just dive in. And Literally it will, at any time yeah. of the process. It will put you where you select your cursor. So you can test from anywhere in your round. So we can see that that works. Copy this, do that's the same like a, thing. Yeah, third row of it. And that's what's really fun also with creative is you can use any obstacles and just rotate them, try to experience, experiment with them. Do things that we would not normally done in our previous rounds. Exactly. So we're gonna copy some more platform and I think this is a good place to get a little checkpoint in, which is sat in the platform section. Similarly with everything else, you'll see that it comes in a little too big for the level we're making. That's fine. We'll just bring this out, change the settings, make it a little smaller to meet what we want. Perfect. And snap that in. Now, I've got an idea for this section. I'm thinking we get two slime platforms on either side with a conveyor coming against us and some little bollards to make it a bit sneaky. Let's go. Yeah, so we're gonna just make that quite thin, drag that out. As you can see, we're just grabbing objects from the object pool, copying them, making them to the perfect size and just getting them in. So and we're gonna get our bollards. We're gonna whack these in a nice little sort of triangular formation. Just so if we get a bunch of players funneling in, it's a little difficult. And then we'll copy these. So with the paint tool, you don't have to hold it. You can just kind of drag things out as you want. Copy that. I don't even have to redo all of that work. So we're now going to select our final little bottle because we just want one in the middle. There we go. We've immediately got our two parts. We're now going to get the our conveyor. The you conveyor. Yeah. So we're going to set this in the settings. Similarly, we get a lot of options here. We're going to set this to go to reverse. We're going to have this at normal speed because I think fast might be a bit we'll too be much. Too <laughs> a bit too much. And then we're going to conjoin this with a standard platform. Really short section, nice and sweet. Drag this out. And then because I'm feeling just a little bit, a little bit fiendish, we're going to get some hammers in there as well. Now hammers, similarly, you might have seen sometimes they're like in this position in previous rounds. This time we're going to have them sideways. So you can use the same object in a different way to achieve the same goal. So we're going to put that one there. We're gonna put this one here and we're gonna rotate it round. Now something you can do, if we go into play here, you'll see that they kind of go at the same time. And if that's what you want, that's great. But if you want something a little more chaotic, you can just put a little delay on them. But perfect. Yeah. And then I'm thinking you get a checkpoint in there. Yeah, a little checkpoint after that section would be perfect. Do the same thing. Actually, we can just copy this one. Because you know what? It saves time. And the exact same size as we need as well, so perfect. So now that we've got this uh, this checkpoint and I did the previous section, what are you thinking we should do yeah, for the next one? Yeah, so I was thinking that we could add a little bit of verticality again to the level because we went down. Let's go yeah, back okay, up yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah, no, what I'm, do you I'm, think? I'm, I, yeah, I feel that. I can feel it. Yeah, cool. Let's do that. And this is what's great about Creative. If you and your friends just want to get together, kind of bounce ideas off each other and just create something on the fly, yeah. you can do that. Let's put a little drum. Okay, on yeah, each yeah. of the path, adding a little lily lippers. Uh, a little lily vibe. lippers inspiration? Yeah, a little lily lippers oh. inspiration to the level. Now, the drums are a bit tall, so I think we might need to add Do you need the ramps? ramps. Yeah. yeah. You need to put ramps. ramps. As I said, we've, like every object, these are customizable. So 
we kind of need the height here, so we're gonna need to change the settings. We're gonna need a larger slope. Maybe let's make it a bit shorter and then change the color. Give it a yeah, little, make to it make pop a out difference a as well yeah. from the floor. So let's get that in there. Extend this out by one. There we go. A nice little ramp up to awesome. our drums. Now, after the drums, you can put little blocks, you yeah. know, to have a little platform to land on. So let's do that and then we'll cut this in. Perfect. Yeah, exactly what I had this in mind. Out. There we go. Awesome. I'm glad I'm reading your mind here. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you feel feeling after this? So I want to make them different, you know, like two different okay, challenges. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking for the left one, we could go with this fan, yeah? Yeah, over yeah, there. yeah. Okay, so let's get these fans in. You can see that when I try and place the object, it goes red. This is because the object itself is probably going to collide with the other object. Let's change their settings Yeah, change the bit. settings, yeah. Anti-clockwise. Yeah. Normal as well. Give it a little bit of a delay, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And this one clockwise but and fast. fast. Yeah, with a little more. <laughs> um, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> and then, what do you want for? What do you think for the other side? Um, maybe we'll go with the the, the, the rotating rotating beams. The rotating beam. Yeah, I'm the rotating there. beam. I'm already there. Same thing as the other side. So okay. immediately we can go in, play this, check this out. It's always worthwhile if you're going to build a, a split path round. You want to make sure that both sides are yeah. achievable. Would you look at this? I'm awful at these, but oh. oh no. <laughs> well, you're doing great for someone who's <laughs> awful at them. And let's check the other side. Oh, whirly gig vibes here. I'm feeling it. It's fine. We're all good. Brilliant. Now we need to bring these in line, and I have the perfect idea. We just get seesaws. some seesaws. Yeah. And I love the little seesaws. They have this lovely white line, so you. Roughly know when you're looking at it from above. Perfect. Where to, to align them there. up. Yeah. And we get that last one in there. Change the colors. Just, you know, give it a little bit of flavor. Love. Loving this, yeah. And then another checkpoint. Yeah, let's go. Wonderful. And now I think we should do the last dash yeah. to the end of the level. Wrap up the level. Yeah. Have a little idea of where I want to go there. Let's have some. You're going to have a slime floor, aren't you? Slime floor I knew you and say sliding that. down I knew. to the end. Yes. So we have a little long ramp. I think we. Can make take it a this. little longer. Yeah, a little longer? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to rotate this, give it a little slant. And then we're going to get a second copy. one. Make it, it steeper. Make it steeper. Oh, and we'll get that in there. Close we can. Oh, nice. Lovely. We can give that a little test. Yeah. I love that we can't, can't see, the, see second the second one. one. <laughs> well, this just exudes chaotic vibes. It so let's, is. Let's keep this Brilliant. going. I think you could add a little challenge to it. Yeah? And put some pendulums over there. Oh. And then I'm thinking at the end of this, let's have one Ooh. right at the end. Cheeky. <laughs> Very cheeky, just to kind of get that right before we yeah. place the finish line. Create a lot of momentum as well. And then we're gonna, I think we can place our finish line. Yeah, let's go. And now I think that is our round. And look at that. It looks like a very simple, straightforward round. We did this in a really short period of time, but yeah. you already have something that you can just play and test out. So now that we're done, we now need to go through and publish, publish. this. So what you want to do when you're when you're ready and you're done with your round, you're going to press the uh, start button or the button appropriate to your controller. Firstly, I recommend saving. That will just automatically save the, the round and also generic settings so that you can adjust that later. It just makes sure you don't lose any progress while you're building things. Yeah. Um, and we're going to hit the publish flow. Yeah, let's go. So let's go. Gives a little intro camera mm. of the level as well. Something that you obviously probably recognize from our previous round, so we wanted to make sure that you've got your own little intro camera. All right, so let's see if we can let's go, uh, let's play go. this. Now, oh. you know. <gasps> yeah. So you can see, because we changed the open doors, it's uh, we set it to two, right? So Yeah. Oh, I'm awful at this. Oh, I'm awful. Come on, there we go. I'm going to take the risky You're going to the, past of, to the past of most resistance here. <laughs> Something to take in mind when you're building these out is that depending on how, the amount of players you're building for, you'll want to make sure there's space for players to get through. So whilst it may seem fairly easy on your own, it's probably going to be a bit harder when more players are going players, through. Yeah. yeah, you are doing great. <laughs> <laughs> no fails yet. Yes. Right. Yet. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know yeah. we should have done. We should have changed the pendulum We should have done. Timers. Yeah, little delays. But that's the thing. You can change the flavor to however you want it to, and. You know, oh. And I should have jumped. Okay, I'll make sure I jump this time. Yeah, this time do not forget to jump. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm, oh, I'm just bad at that. You got it! Yeah, all right, nice. all right, we got there, we got there. So now that like, we've done the test complete and we can now choose to publish. So we can uh, either cancel this if we want to make some changes or you didn't like the round that you made. 
Um, similar to the pendulums, we realized they're yeah. all on the same timing, so we could change that if we wanted. I think we're good I think we're for good. this run through. So let's just publish this, and that gives us our share, share code. code. Yeah. <laughs> From there, you can like hand that around to your friends, put it out into the online community, and get players in your rounds. Yeah, I hope this little run through gave you a good idea of what creative can do. And yeah, it's all about build your round, play it, and share it with your friends and the community. We're super excited to see what you guys can come up with and what you're going to build. And yeah, we're looking forward to play mm. what you're going to make. We've been doing this for a long time, so we're super excited to see the things Definitely. that you folks create. But yeah, and I think that's it from us, right? Yeah. Cool. All right. Catch you later. See you in another Bye. video. Bye. Bye. Woohoo! Woo! Build. Play. Share. It's as easy as that. Remember, Creative will be launching with original and digital themes and you'll be able to create your own races on launch. But we'll also be adding more round types, themes, obstacles and music in future updates. Whew. So, now you've heard all that, I think you're probably ready to jump in and start building. And we've got a few tips to help give you a boost. Firstly, make sure you're a member of the Fall Guys Discord server where you'll be able to share your creations using your round share code. Next, if you're looking for some pointers or inspiration, then keep an eye out for our brand new YouTube series. Finally, the Mediatonic team will be roaming through their favorite creations to add to specially constructed creator round playlists, and they will be in the live shows tab. Now, who's your favorite Fall Guys character? You a fan of the mysterious Silent, the ever-optimistic Pink, or maybe it's the mechanically-minded Clovis? Personally, I'm rather partial to Banana, something about those eyebrows. Well, we're lucky enough to be joined by senior writer Murray Lewis, who's going to take us on a deep dive into the world of Fall Guys lore. <laughs> Hello, Murray, and welcome to the library. We are surrounded by, if you have an evil eye, you'll notice some of the characters here who do actually have quite a part to play in the story, the narrative of Fall Guys. So as I'm introducing you to this library, why don't you tell us how you've introduced a narrative to Fall Guys and what that's been like? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun, you know, finding ways to introduce new characters, new stories to that world. It's, it's very vibrant. It's very uh, fun just to play around in, really. Yeah. You know, having all these beans to, to <laughs> tell stories with. I think that's a sentence you ever expected you'd be saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the sky's the limit when you've got like such a, a insanely like open concept universe, right, as Fall Guys. But there are some main characters at the moment, so why don't you tell us about who they are? Yeah, so going all the way back to the beginning, the, the original launch of Fall Guys, we've always had Pink, uh, who is our kind of every bean, and also uh, introduced at slightly later, but has been around again for a long time, is Clovis, who is uh, Pink's best friend, um, and they are an engineer. And then we started to introduce more narrative-focused characters, like Silent, um, who is a showrunner. They do their best to just create the best shows that they possibly can, but they also have this fascination with the world of Fall Guys and trying to find out a bit more about the history of, of the world that they're in, and then they're helped by Banana, who is their assistant uh, showrunner. Um, and then more recently, we've started to introduce characters like Hypebean, who you would have seen in the trailer for Free For All. Uh, they, they're kind of a, a celebrity in the world of Fall Guys in the Blunder Dome. And then we've also got Stash and Sally, mm -hmm. who you would have seen at the end of that trailer. And, and also we brought them into the, the following season, a, kind of a duo of uh, researchers that work with Silent. Quite a big cast so far. I mean, is that <laughs> going to continue to expand or are you done? <laughs> no, absolutely. We've got lots of uh, upcoming new characters. We would have seen King Poseidon that we introduced uh, in this season in Sunken Secrets, um, recently emerged. And moving forwards into next season, I can now reveal um, a new character called Digi that ah. we're going to be introducing who is also an engineer like Clovis. At the moment, she's currently missing. Um, so we're hoping to, to look into, you know, what happened to Digi, where has she been, what she's been up to. Yeah, I love a good mystery. Okay, all right. Well, speaking of mystery, for the uninitiated, why don't you give us a recap of the main Four Guys story so far? I mean, if we take it back to when we first introduced Silent, um, it's a few seasons ago, we would have seen them initially uh, putting together the plans to launch the satellite, which became the satellite of, uh, of the free-for-all season. But they had a bit of an ulterior motive. So they weren't just doing it to, to broadcast the show across the, the universe. 
Oh. <laughs> uh, they also have this mysterious belt that they've been holding on to. They don't know exactly where it came from, but they know it's not from the Blunder Dome, and they've been trying to work out where it came from. And so they sent this satellite up in the hopes of finding out. But Stash and Sally, being Stash and Sally, uh, kind of messed it all up. And, uh, and it got to the point where Silent was like, you know what, I'm just going to go up there and do it myself. And they started looking for this signal, and they found a signal coming from the planet. But as they found it, something went wrong. And it got Silent stuck inside the machinery of the satellite. And, and Banana had to actually come to their rescue, as you would have seen at the end of that season. That's why we love Banana. <laughs> always there to help out. Yes. And, and pulling Silent out of that machinery kind of caused this, this energy burst that opened up one last big portal. And that became our, our way down uh, to the source of the signal that Silent found. Okay. And that was the Lost City. When they got there, there was it seemed empty, but it uh, turned out that the, the beans, uh, led by Poseidon, were just hiding, just, you know, waiting in the shadows, being like, do we trust these yeah. beans? We've never seen these beans before. Scoping out the newcomers. <laughs> yeah, go do it. And then they, they've emerged now, and, and they're happy to make friends. So we've got to this point now where Digi has been missing for a, a little while. And we've got a bit of a mystery to solve there. So where do we go from here? It's a good thing you asked. <laughs> um, we do actually have an event called Coin Quest. Mm. Uh, the players can uh, hopefully jump in and find out. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Murray. And right now we have a quick look at the teaser for Coin Quest. Check it out. Don't forget to check out the coin quest and help Silent and the rest of the gang to prove their worth to Poseidon. Well, there you have it. Everything you need to know to get you ready for the big release on May the 10th. We'll see you next time. Bye. Wait, I almost forgot. I promised earlier that we were going to look at what else is planned for the future. And I don't break my promises. So let's get into it. One little warning before we dive in, these features are very much still in development, which means they could change drastically before release or never even see the light of day outside of the Mediatonic studio. So you've been warned. Now we've got that out of the way, let's head back over to Joe for some exclusive details. Welcome back, Joe. We've dragged you back in because we want to talk about some experimental features and they aren't a guarantee. I need to reiterate, need to make it clear, not a guarantee, but still very exciting to think about. So, how does it feel to talk about these? Yeah, it's certainly scary. Um, we never really talked about features that were kind of early in development before, but uh, I think it's really important that we take an opportunity to kind of show our players our ambitions for the game over the next years. Um, we want to do more and more with these silly little jelly beans that we have, like, <laughs> we love them so much, and I just think there are so many great ways that we can take this game. And yeah, once to have an opportunity to kind of peel behind the curtain a little bit and show what it's like to develop things earlier on in development. So which features are you most excited about? Power-ups is a way to kind of inject kind of even crazier gameplay into Fall Guys in a way that we haven't really been able to find a space for yet. Um, so kind of allowing Fall Guys to do weird and wonderful things and giving players the control over like when they happen <laughs> is something that I think is really cool. Uh, and all of this would kind of be delivered through creative as well. So you could maybe put power-ups in your own levels and certain Ooh. places and things like that. So of course, again, you know, we have to say that these might not happen, they might happen, but anything else you've conceived that uh, might come to the game? Yeah, there, I mean, there's other stuff that we've been playing around with over the past year, though. It's, it's just fun to show demonstrations of, really. Uh, tether mode is something we've been making, which is basically, if you imagine, co-op full guys, but with giant bungee cords between you. Okay, all right. Well, how does that work? You just start at the beginning tethered to each other? Yeah, or? we've been playing it where you're, you're tethered, and if you run kind of either side of a pillar, you both get pulled back. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, <laughs> and you can kind of pull the other person up if they fall off the map. Uh, we've had lots of fun testing that, and it feels very promising. That's pretty fun. That uh, could be troll or incredibly yeah. wholesome, depending on how yeah, you utilize exactly. it. And that's kind of one of the ways we've been looking at co-op gameplay in the game, for example. Like, we know players love playing Fall Guys, maybe not in a competitive setting, and we think it'd be really fun to kind of look at what co-op might be, uh, for example. Uh, another thing that we've been doing, for example, is uh, the role feature, which was 
uh, adding new movement to the fall guy in a way that's like even more adventurous than dive slide. So what would it feel like if you could curl up into a ball and bounce your way around levels, uh, bounce off Yeta's hammers and things like that? Oh my gosh, uh, so make that's tail kind tag of... even more infuriating. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, lots to do there, and just it's it's just fun to kind of show the kind of prototypey things that we've been doing in the studio and just yeah give people a sense of all the things that we want to do with the game. Obviously players can see just how far the game has come and it's, it's come a very long way since yeah. its inception but for you that must be even more wild. <laughs> yeah I mean it's been an amazing ride. I think one thing we always wanted you know before the game even came out we talked about one day allowing players to make their own levels and so finally to be at the point where creative has nearly launched is uh, is really exciting. Um, I think Fall Guys is in a special place where you know anybody can make a level. Like you just have to throw a couple of obstacles and a start and a finish line, and hope that this could be the opportunity for people who've maybe never tried their hand at game design before. Um, but yeah, more generally, uh, it's 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 been a real ride. Uh, we haven't got everything right. You know, we've made mistakes over the course of development, and I kind of just wanted to take the opportunity to thank our players for for sticking with us as we try and figure out the weird and wonderful world of Fall Guys. Uh, it's 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 been a real journey, and um, yeah, excited to take the game from creative beyond into kind of weird and wonderful directions over the next few years. Weird and wonderful, definitely the words I would use for it. <laughs> thank you so much, Joe, and thank you to all of you for watching at home. Remember, creative does come out on May the tenth, so dive in and have fun. We'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.